Okay, so I'm Grass Walker. Hello, and welcome to this Roll20 guide on how to set up your tokens and have them in some pristine condition where they have all the functionality you'd ever want from a token. So this is the final form of the token. This is Quarian. It has a nameplate, has a health bar that's inside of the token. The health bar adjusts. Every other player can see the health bar. This benefits the players because if you look around the room and you look to your friend and they're at half health, you can see that they're bloodied. You can see that they're fucked. If they're at full health, you can see that they're in full fighting shape. If they're at zero health, you can see that they're on the floor dying. There's no reason to add these dialogues where one player starts their turn and they say, alright, how's this guy looking? How's this guy looking? Just cut that out, have a health bar. The players can't see the exact amounts, but they can see the states of the health. So they don't know if Quarian has 50 or 55, because the health bar change is barely a millimeter on their screen. As a DM, you can also set up things like passive perception, which we can see is 15, so that when Quarian walks into this room, I can click on his token, I can see his passive perception, and I can tell him exactly what he sees without having to roll. Um, if he chooses to roll, he might find more stuff or less stuff, but that's a thing. And then the armor class, so that say this Kilrin guy is hostile, and he goes to attack him, and I roll a 17, instead of going adding these dialogues, these pointless, time-consuming dialogues in combat where you say, hey Quarian, what's your AC? He has to open his sheet, swap to the right tab, he might be looking at his spells, and he might have, then he has to go like, oh, my AC's 18, and then you have to acknowledge that, go back to your roll, decide whether or not it hits. You can skip all that shit, you can just bring this dragon man here, roll a 17, go, does that hit? And then you click on the token, you see it's an 18, and you just immediately start narrating that it doesn't hit. You skip out all of the additional steps. So if we come over to this room to the side, you can see two empty tokens. It's up to you how you want to do your tokens, if you want them to be circles, squares, take up the whole square, it's up to you. Nobody really cares that much, but I'm sure you have your own preference and you'll find them. You can make your tokens using token stamp 2 or anything else you want. So you can pick the colour of the border as black, you can pick it as having spikes, or like this weird sheen to it, some double stripe. Background colour doesn't think do it, it does anything. You can add a bit of shadows to it. and. Uh, you can also crop and adjust artwork that you upload to the site. So you can have a real close-up, this is the final token on the right, a real close-up of the bear face, or you could zoom it out, not not that far, that's way too far. Or you could zoom it out and be like, hey look, you can you can see the handle to a weapon and some big armor, there's more character detail on the token. It's up to you how you want to do your tokens. I personally just use the fucking crop to show that they're in that entire square. But for the sake of the video, we'll delete this and we'll use a circle token. So in order to set up the token, you're going to want to click it, then you can either double click and it opens up this menu. If we cancel that, you can single click, click the little settings cogwheel. Both are ways to get into it, I prefer to double click. The most important thing is you need to represent the correct character. So you want to go to Adamant, as you can see that's the Warforged guy, and immediately you see everything sort of changes. So you want to show the nameplate, it's up to you if you want to show it or not. Uh, so if we click save, you can now see it says Adamant. If we double click, if he's being referred to as all his friends as Adam, then you can set it to that. Or if you just don't want a nameplate, just kill it and just hope that they remember his name. But if you're in character on a map, you're like, who am I healing? And the name Adam is right there. And it just saves you that little bit of time. Then you can set up your bars. So you can have a bar up here as HP, but I don't like this. Because if this happens, you either, you're covering up other people's tokens. Or I think it's based on the most recent thing on the battlefield, which it is, as I've just shown. So if an enemy, such as Bairn, comes over, you can no longer see your health bar, it's fucking gone. That's another disadvantage to the names, you start covering up things if you start doubling up on squares. Uh, so if we get rid of the names and have a nice clean look, we get rid of that as being the HP bar. But if we set the red one as the HP bar, the uh, health bar is set, so now that we can go on 20 and he's roughly at half health, or we can go at 5 and you can see he's kind of fucked, or we can just go back to 35. You can also do maths in this, so if you took 11 damage, right, minus 11, and it goes to 24, if you've gained 10 health, you can go to that. You want to be careful though, because you can mistype 1000 and your health bar then goes wee off the map, uh, but <laughs> that's probably not going to come up very often. Once you've got your health set up, you can choose to have blue as AC, those are both right up there. If you want passives, uh, you have to save the changes on this. You're going to have to go onto the character sheet, you have to go onto settings, and you're going to have to go into the skills section. If anybody spots it, feel free to point it out. But where it says show passives, 
Okay, so the passive skills is in the display section right at the top, at least that's where it is in this version of Roll20. And then what that does is it puts the passives on the sheet just here, it's always just 10 plus the uh, modifier. But then you can go start typing in passive, and you could have passive perception, passive insight, anything like that. And now, now we're looking at a token that's got health, passive perception and AC, which is looking real good, I'm quite happy with that now. But, the thing is no one else can see any of those things. So you need to go onto advanced and turn on the player permissions to see all of those things. With that stage complete we need to think about dark vision, because at the minute if we click the token do Control L to preview what it can see, it can see nothing. It can move, can't see anything. That's awful, you don't, you don't want that. So what we need is we need to click has sight to start with, uh, which means if we control L it can now see the lighting that's on the map. So because there's a candle here and it's emitting something like 30 feet of light, he can see it. But if he ventures into the darkness, he can't see anything, which again is awful. So what we want to do is we want to put emit light. Now the left hand column is the total amount of light they have, so if you put 100 there'll be light for 100 feet and then this one decides where it starts becoming dim. So if you put 100, 100, it doesn't become dim until it reaches 100 feet, which means you just have 100 feet of bright to light. Now to show you what that looks like, let's do this. So they can just see the map perfectly for 100 feet, unless they bump into any objects. But 100, zero means it's all dim light. Now that looks a little bit dimmer, obviously. You can see where the torch is emitting bright light just there for about 15, 20 feet compared to the dim light down here. Now what I like to do is if a character does not have dark vision, such as the Warforged race or humans, I like to give them 10, 15, something like that, 15 and 5, so that they can see this around themselves. So if they go into complete darkness, they can see about 10, 15 feet in front of them in a dim light. Now this means they can actually navigate maps, it means they can actually function in combat, they can see that monster, but not until they got to like here. You can see some claws in it. Their, their eyes will probably be drawn to that switch. Get to here, they probably see it, and here they've definitely seen it, but it's already too late. And look, they're actually in melee with it by the time they've properly seen it. But if you give them, say, the official amount, which is naught naught, they they can't see anything. They just they're not they're not even playing D and D. They're just playing navigate the map simulator 2017 which is AIDS. So if they don't have dark vision give them at least 10-0, preferably 10-5, if you're feeling generous 15-5. If they do have dark vision you give them the 60 feet of dark vision, you can have it be bright light at about 20-25 feet. I normally opt for 20 so that it looks a little bit like this. So he starts navigating into this dark corridor and he can already see the thing. So he's got a humongous advantage over that uh, non-dark vision guy. He starts coming in, he can see it. You get here, it's bright light, and you can already see into this room where banners, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, basically, they have a ridiculous amount more vision than the guys without dark vision. And it's rarely going to come up, but if someone has the superior dark vision, uh, I like to give them 12060 to really set down that these guys have perfect dark vision, they can see in bright light where you guys see mostly dim, then they can see twice as far as all of you. This, these are the drow races that have the 120 dark vision plus sunlight sensitivity. If they're going to have that drawback you may as well reward them. We'll set this guy to 60-20. Don't want all players see light because that means your character's acting as a torch which is kind of ridiculous. If you're feeling hostile you can set an angle, uh, which means they can't see behind them. Uh, if you feel feeling really harsh you can set an angle like about 210 means they would only be able to see in sort of you know like you look around you can sort of make out angles behind you but you can't see directly behind you. This would force your characters to turn around. I, I did this in my campaign for a bit but I found it just added extra layers to what they were doing normally like if you want to see what's behind you, you just do this, and then go back. It's kind of a waste of time, but it depends how important vision and sight is in your campaign as to whether or not you have success with that. Personally, I just delete it and give them the full 360 vision, but it's up to you. If you want to be like, alright, your characters have fucking cone vision, 
Uh, they've got stiff necks, and they can only see what's in front of them, and you have to look around. Fair play to you, but players will just spin their token and just do a wee kind of thing. If you're running Advanced Fog of War, it's just set it to the maximum dark vision they would have, so 10-15 if they don't have dark vision, 60 if they do, 120 for superior. The only difference between normal uh, dynamic lighting and advanced fog of war is it saves what you can see. So if we go into it, do a bit of control L, let's have a look into that room, and then let's come back down. Hang, hang on, let's go have a look in that room. Good old look in that room. And then let's leave it and come back down here. Now the map has been sort of saved. What I've seen, I still sort of have logged on the map. So likewise, if I come down here, and dark vision all updates, I can still sort of remember what this room was like. It's good so that your players, if you have a big map like this, your players don't just immediately get lost and they work room to room and they forget everything behind them. It's quite good for that, but it's got the disadvantage of if things update in the room, they don't know that it's updated, but they'll have a hunch exactly where the room is and what used to be there. If you want to use it, go for it. I haven't used it before because by the time it was released I wasn't DMing anymore. Um, the mileage may vary, just give it a try, see if see if it works for you. If it doesn't, turn it off. If it does, have fun because I like the idea that you can explore a bit of a map, paint yourself into this dark corner, but still remember that there was a passageway down here. So, now that you've got your token set up, it's got health, it's got pass perception, it's got AC, you click it in, everyone can see these things, it emits light, has dark vision, fantastic. Done? No, 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 not at all. This is the most important part of all. You need to go onto the sheet, you need to click edit, and you need to highlight the token that you want to use. You need to click use uh, default token optional. So what this means is if we save that, if you go onto a different map, such as this lumber camp, and you drag Adamant onto the map, he now has all of those things that you set up before. So in those five minutes we spent setting it up, we now have that token on every map. If you don't set that default, you just, you're just dragging random pieces of art onto the battlefield. Never forget to set the default token. And if you change anything, remember the default won't change with you. So if we changed... Uh, his thing to have a name, and we're like, you know what guys, I, I want your names on here again, come on Adam Adamant. And now that you drag him on here, he won't have the name, because you haven't updated the default, you've just updated this current one. So if you make any changes, remember to update the default token. Bit of a ball ache when something happens and your players are like, oh can we have our names? And you're like, alright, 10 minutes to update all the defaults, and then the next session they're like, you know what, I don't like the names, turn them off, it's like, fuck's sake players. <laughs> But hopefully this video benefited you guys. I know a lot of people, 90% of the campaigns I join don't use all of these things. 50% of the campaigns I, do, I join don't use any of these things. If you only want to use health bars and that's it, that's the extent to which you want to use these custom tokens, go for it, that's fine. Um, but try, try to at least use something, make your tokens a bit more than just a blank piece of artwork that happens to represent your character. If you want to do a cute little circle thing and Everyone has different coloured circles to represent what role they fill in the party, or what their alignment is, or whatever. Go for it, like, go ham, absolutely fucking nail it. <laughs>